everybody, I'm Dr. J, and this is Little Boots. Believe it or not, she's a year old now. Sadly, our history is going away, and with it go all the people and all the memories. And today, you and I are going to get to rescue some more history. So what do you say, Boots? You ready to rescue some history? Let's go. Let's take a walk. <laughs> Welcome to Walking the American West with Dr. J, preserving the history of the Western frontier and sharing the memories and events that shaped America. Thanks for coming with us. If you enjoy the walk, hit the thumbs up button to let us know and feel free to smash that subscribe button so you never get left behind. Castle Dome, Arizona, literally surrounded by history that has been rescued. Located about an hour's drive north of Yuma and at the end of a seven mile dirt road, Castle Dome is one of the best preserved original ghost towns in all of Arizona. Oh, there you are. Established in 1864 as a silver mining camp and named for the nearby mountain peak, Castle Dome quickly became a major, major boom town. Its population quickly eclipsed that of nearby Yuma by a factor of three, and it had all the bells and whistles, including daily stage service to Phoenix. Did somebody say siesta? <sighs> This may look a little out of place, but with a mining history that stretches all the way from 1864 to 1979, Castle Dome has the distinction of being the longest running continuous mining operation in all of Arizona. And that's saying something because most mining boom towns were very short lived. Castle Dome's longevity is due primarily to two factors. One, its close proximity to the Colorado River. The other, due to the relatively inexpensive cost of shipping at the time. Now, this operation came to a halt in 1979. And that's recent. What finally did this town in was the cost of separating what silver was left here from all the lead that was also found here. Speaking of lead, <laughs> much like the mines in Tombstone, if it hadn't been for the nine million pounds of lead ore taken out of here during World War I and World War II, we might have run out of bullets. Well, what do you know? No more bullets. In fact, during World War II, lead production was considered so important to the war effort that the Japanese considered little old Castle Dome to be a strategic target. But for the lack of long-range bombers, they might have hit this town. The town site remained dormant for nearly 20 years until 1999, at which time Alan Armstrong, a true visionary with a passion for history, decided to start restoring this town. With 50 or so structures, many of which still contain all the original artifacts, including canned goods that are well over a hundred years old, this town gives one the sensation that all the original residents have just left for the day and are due back at any moment. Most Old West boom towns start with a rumor. 
somebody has a hunch, usually about the potential for untold wealth. Once the strike happens, try as they might, someone just can't keep a secret. New rumors start to fly, and the rush is on. A rudimentary mining camp pops up, mostly made up of tents. What do you say we take a look inside? As rough as it appears, this miner's tent is actually quite luxurious for its day, even if it isn't creepy crawly proof. Speaking of which, one of the most valuable things miner could possess would be a cat to keep down the scorpions. Life as a miner was hard, but the pay was great. And that in turn attracted businesses of all kinds to support the miners and their families. With extra money to spare, it sure didn't take long for gambling, prostitution, and saloons to flourish. Boys will be boys. <laughs> this here was one of five saloons in town. Can you guess what's missing? Bars in the Old West didn't have bar stools. The owner of the bar figured if you were too drunk to stay upright, then it was time to step aside and let someone else belly up to that bar. With so many unsavory activities and sinning going on, it was only a matter of time before the first church arrived. And Castle Dome was no exception. Check this out. This here's the interior of the original church, fully preserved and worship ready. A spiritual oasis in the middle of the desert. Of course, there would be those incorrigibles that just couldn't help themselves. And you and I know what happens when alcohol and gunpowder mix. That's when you need some law and order. Contrary to what you'll see in the movies, most early mining camps didn't even have a jail. Or for that matter, a lawman either. Disputes would have been settled by something called a miner's court. And if someone did need jailing, there was always chaining them to the jail tree. Although countless Western movies have taken all of us inside of plenty of movie jails, the difference with this one here, it's real. And it looks to me like the marshal just stepped out to make his rounds. I'm thinking we shouldn't be here when he gets back. More than 300 mines containing more than 30 minerals still lie deep beneath this town. Now, due to the remoteness of this town and lack of a railroad, some of the largest wagons in the world had to be built just to carry supplies. That required teams of as many as 40 horses or mules just to get them moving. The whole mine with its fluorescent mineral walls is the only one you can tour today, and it's worth it.
Whether it's a hotel, a blacksmith shop, or a saloon, you're going to find it here. The boardwalk still creak, the church bell still rings out, and the saloon awaits its next shootout. <laughs> It sure is great to have a little traveling buddy to explore the Old West with. And Boots here wanted to be sure and remind me to remind you to spay and neuter your pets. And when you're in a market for a new little traveling buddy of your own, and she's ready to roll right now, be sure and adopt a rescue. Right, Boots? What do you say we get going, huh? <laughs> This museum will give you a sense of what life was like in a real old West mining camp from over a century ago. What do you say, Boots? Are you ready to keep walking? Let's walk. You've been walking the American West with Dr. J. Please remember to like and subscribe. And thanks for walking with us.